Hey Legends, Blake here with another video and today I want to talk all about a fish that I reckon is really really underrated. They're a live bearer, they're easy to breed, they're colourful and they're a bit bigger so they're really going to pop in those big planted aquariums. So today let's talk all about sword tails, how to care for them and how to breed them. Let's jump straight into the video. So sword tails, scientific names like Phophorus hellerii, have common names such as green sword tails and red sword tails, or just commonly sword tails. Originally they come from Mexico, and as I mentioned in the intro, they are a live bearer, which means that they birth live young. They're not a fish that's going to be scattering eggs all around the place, and it's actually a really great one because when they're born, they'll be old enough to immediately take a food source such as live baby brine shrimp, but they'll also readily take flake food. They're really easy to feed, even from day one. With, in terms of trying to describe their size, it can be quite difficult because some of the species get really, really long swords, which can be up to 15 centimeters in total length from mouth to end of their uh, tail. But for the most part, they're gonna be about the size of a large platy. So I'd say in body to uh, start of the tail, I'd go about four, four inches or so, or 10 centimeters for a big specimen. Their colors vary quite a lot. You can get basically any color under the sun. Personally, I keep tricolored sword tails and that's gonna be the type that you're gonna see in the footage throughout this video. I just like the variety that they give, but uh, there's heaps of options available uh, for whatever your taste might be. Sword tails are omnivorous and they're gonna readily take any food whatsoever, whether that be pellets or flakes, but they will enjoy a bit of supplementation from live foods. Uh, they're going to be peaceful in community tanks and they're plant safe, so I really recommend keeping them in a larger, more planted aquarium. If you are going to keep them in the smallest aquarium available, I wouldn't put them in anything less than about a 15 gallon or 60 litre aquarium. In terms of temperature, keep them in from about 17 to 27 degrees Celsius or 64 to 82 degrees Fahrenheit. But again, that's a huge variety there, so they're really, really hardy and they're not going to be as fussy as some other fish that are out there. I would keep them in pH levels above 7, so 7 to 8.4. Being a live bearer, they do enjoy a bit of hardness in the water, so I wouldn't keep them in anything too acidic. And if you do keep them in conditions that they're going to be happy within, they'll give you a lifespan of about 3 to 5 years. Now, while sword tails do go great in community aquariums with plenty of tetras, just be mindful that that long sword tail is prone to being nipped at, so I wouldn't recommend keeping them with barbs or any of the uh, more aggressive cichlids or anything like that. And especially if you want to maximize breeding, then I'd keep them species only, and that's what I do myself. It's best to keep them in a ratio of one male to every two or three females so that the males won't continually pester the females to breed and they can you know, not get too stressed out until they deliver. But to do that, you're obviously going to need to know the difference between males and females. Now, males are going to have what's called a gonopodium, which is kind of like a pistol-shaped uh, fin underneath their body, uh, near their anal fin and females are going to have more of a triangular shaped fin uh, at that area. So I'll put something on the screen now so that you can visually see the difference, but uh, if you can keep yeah, three ideally females for every one male, you'll set yourself up for a great deal of success breeding these guys. On the topic of breeding, while they are a live bearer, other sword tails within the aquarium might consume the newborn babies uh, of one of the sword tail pairs. So in order to have best success when breeding sword tails, I think it's a good idea to have heaps of plant coverage, dense and bushy plants, and floating plants. I found, especially in the early stages, the sword tails do tend to stay up the top of the aquarium. Uh, so things like water lettuce, frog bit, and salvinia, if any of those are legal in your area, are gonna be great for protection for these newborn baby sword tails. Again, the larger the aquarium, the more places to hide is going to be a recipe for more success as the babies will immediately be able to escape somewhere. If it's a barren and sparse aquarium or it's very, very small, then of course there's going to be less distance between the baby sword towel and the mouth of the next uh, hungry sword towel in the aquarium. 
The only other tips really is that if you're gonna have a mechanical filter that is likely to suck up those babies, then put an intake sponge or something over the intake so that that can't happen. And if your sawtails have been adults for quite a while, and you're still not seeing that breeding, then I recommend increasing the food, uh, in incorporating live foods as well, and making sure that they have plenty of availability to both protein and fats, which are gonna help to really pack on size and uh, condition these fish so that they can make heaps and heaps of babies over and over again. Overall, I've really enjoyed keeping sword tails since I brought them into the fish room. The good thing is, is, is that they're readily available and there should be somebody in the community near you who is breeding uh, at least one type of sword tail or an, a fish store sh that should be able to bring one in for you. Some good search terms if you're looking for different types of varieties might be pineapple sword tails, high fin sword tails, or kohaku sword tails. But if you do a little bit of Googling, I'm sure you'll find the perfect one for you. Overall, if you like this video, it always helps me out to smash like, hit subscribe and all that fun stuff. If you've got any burning questions about your sword tails or about sword tails before you pick them up, feel free to drop them down below and I'll try to respond to as many as I can. Uh, other than that, guys, enjoy the rest of your day. I'll catch you on the next one. Thanks for watching.